started. Um, we want to welcome the uh, 12th seed, the Quinnipiac Bobcats, from the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference, regular season and tournament champions. It's their sixth straight postseason appearance. Uh, they'll play fifth seed Marquette tomorrow at uh, 1.35. And uh, up here we have Coach Trish Fabry, Carly Fabry, Addie Martucci, and I can't. Morgan Mann. <laughs> Morgan Mann. Um, and what we will do is uh, open it up. We'll have Coach open up with some remarks, and um, then we'll open it up for questions to the student athletes. Uh, once the uh, student athletes' questions uh, have, have uh, they've answered all of theirs, then we'll go back and, and have Coach answer hers. So uh, let's get started with uh, Coach Trish Fabry. Good afternoon. Um, we're excited to be um, back in the big dance. Uh, we're excited to be in Miami. Uh, we're looking forward to a great game with Marquette. Um, they've had an incredible season. Uh, Big East champions, and um, but we're really looking forward to uh, an opportunity that we've worked extremely hard for, earned, and to be back here our third time in five years. We've got incredible experience. It's a great opportunity, um, and we're just really excited. Um, to make the most of an opportunity that we have, again, worked really hard for all year long. And this is a moment that I don't feel is too big for this team. And uh, again, we're looking forward to the weekend, the competition tomorrow, and the 40 plus minutes against Marquette tomorrow. A Couple of quick uh, items. The uh, Quinnipiac locker room is open for the other student athletes who are not here and the assistant coaches. They'll be there for a half hour uh, from now, so till one o'clock. Um, and if you have questions, please raise your hand. We have mics on either side. Um, and please identify your, uh, yourself, both your uh, uh, name and your affiliation. Thanks. Tim Reynolds of the AP here in Miami. Carly, it's been like two weeks since the MAC final, I guess, and there's the whole, there's spring break, there was the storm. I don't know if, how much of it you end up getting or not, but um, just what has all this been like to go from that three games in three days in Albany to now 12 days of hurry up and wait for tomorrow? For sure. I mean, in any tournament, you know, like you said, three games in three days, it is a lot. Um, but, you know, we felt good coming out of the MAC tournament, obviously having won it. Um, got, I think, two days off, and then we went right back to practice and refocused. Um, but when we found out on Monday, you know, who we were waiting or who we were going to play, um, you know, we were really excited, kind of finally putting a name to a face. Um, but I think those days off, um, they helped us, you know, recover from a grueling tournament up in Albany. But we're happy to be back in, in tournament play. Um, happy to be in a warmer, uh, <laughs> you know, place in Miami. But definitely, um, you know, it was a long two weeks, but helped, helped us refocus for sure. Dave Borges, New Haven Register. For any of the players, um, I believe you've won 10 games in a row now. Can you talk about how much confidence the team has coming in here? Is, is the confidence pretty sky high right now that I mean, you can accomplish some things this weekend? Um, absolutely. Um, after our little slump, we the 10, the 10 games straight um, has been really big for us and definitely grown our confidence levels. And um, since then, we've just had a huge belie belief in each other and in our coaches, and that's going to be huge um, come tomorrow. That was Addie. Mm-hmm. Next question. In the back. Sierra Goodwill, Q3 Television. For any of the players, um, when the seeding came out on Monday and you, Marquette was asked their initial reactions about p facing Quinnipiac, one of their guards said, I've never heard of it. Um, how do, what are your initial reactions to that, and how does that fuel you? Um, I think that it's nothing new to us. Um, I think a lot of teams that we do play from bigger conferences, they do have trouble pronouncing our name. They don't really know where we're from, even though we have, you know, been a mid-major power for the past couple years. But 
I mean, if anything, it's just an extra push. I mean, we're motivated as it is. We've had this goal um, since summer. You know, we wanted to win our championship in the league, which we did, and we want to win a game in, you know, the NCAA tournament. But um, I think we're just a little bit more focused on our um, ourselves. I think, you know, if they don't know who we are, they're going to know who we are tomorrow. That was Carly. Barry Hirsch, Gordon Q3, Television. Adelie, um, as a starter, uh, your team has been prone to slow starts. Uh, Marquette just said a little while ago in their press conference they want to start the game really well. They want to dictate pace of play, especially in the first five minutes. How do you go about combating that? Um, we definitely want to do the same. And I think because of our slow starts, we need to really change that and start very hot on offense. And I think the big thing about doing that is just staying confident in our own shots. I know that I am very confident in my teammates and they're confident in me, but I think for ourselves, we just need to be confident in our own shots. Tim. Tim Williams of the AP again. When you get to this game, when you talk as a team since summer, like Carly said, to win, win the MAC, get to the NCAA tournament, when you accomplish that, do you almost feel like, yeah, you're playing for yourselves, you're playing for your school, of course, but do you almost feel like you're representing the MAC too in some way that you almost are carrying the MAC flag a little bit when you get into this environment as well? Um, I mean, I definitely think it's, you know, an honor to represent the MAC. You know, there is only one team that gets to be sent here. You have to win your conference. So, you know, being able to come here and represent the MAC in the best way we can, we're going to, you know, we're going to go out there and hopefully we can do our best. Yeah. That was Morgan. Bob Martelli, WQUN. Uh, Trish, third time in five years with this team. In your mind, what set this squad apart from the prior two teams you sent to the NCAAs? That's a great question. Um, ultimately, I think that this team has benefited from the experience of being in um, not only the tournament, but having won championships. They've been able to set a different expectation this year. Um, I also think that we benefited from getting into a championship game and not winning and really having a focus and a clear vision of what they wanted for this season. And they were unwavered in their goals and what they wanted to achieve. It was a challenge, every season is, and we faced our challenges, but how we responded to our challenges has made this team very different than the teams that we've had in the past. Um, nothing good's ever easy, I've said it a million times, but how we responded to losing three out of four the end of January into the beginning of uh, February, and now to win 10 straight, to get into this position, to earn the seed, to see Marquette on this neutral court, to remain unwavered, um, to stand in those challenges, and to respond the way that we have all together has made this team very different. And I've said the word time and again. We talked a lot about grit, resilience, finding ways. You know, we haven't gotten out to our best starts. That's been maybe just who we are. And But we have been... Um, <coughs> Resilient, there's no panic, there is poise in how we find ways to win. And that's what I expect from this team tomorrow, regardless of a start. Trish, the, the logistics of this week, what, I, I guess you went to do some rating for food or something like that. I read it. <laughs> but what, just how, how difficult was was all that to, to deal with, just from a logistics standpoint? Yeah, it, you know, honestly, uh, Tim, it wasn't bad at all because uh, my part-time job is meteorologist. I really enjoy the Weather Channel, and um, so we, you know, we were planning ahead. And fortunately enough, after the selection show, uh, with the weather coming, and and even before that. We had the plan in effect that we went grocery shopping. We had plenty of supplies on, on hand. And with finding out that we were playing on Saturday really did help us that we were able to not practice on Tuesday. And the governor did close the roads down. So there was no way we, there was a travel ban that we were not going to get on the roads. And the players can tell you that they went in and they went grocery shopping in the team room. And everyone had their supplies for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. 
and everything was copacetic and we were able to have really good prep days, our practice, and stay into a routine. And the best thing was we knew we were coming to Miami. So maybe they weren't going anywhere for spring break, but we still were able to get to Miami. So it was really a win-win for us. How much, I, I know it turned inland, but how much did you guys end up getting? It was around 10 to 12 inches of snow, and then, you know, it was still pretty icy the next day, but okay. we fared out pretty well. I, and to get off the weather and actually a basketball yes. question, if you don't mind, too. <laughs> just, when you just... There's three games really on their schedule that sort of jump up. The three against DePaul. DePaul locked down mm -hmm. everybody all year, and they average like 100 in yes. those three games. What is it about their ability to get out and go that might concern you the most? Yes. Um, well, because they just, you know, I studied up as much as I could, and I actually, ironically enough, just had that championship game on that night uh, watching them play. You know, the synergy that they have with the three players that played on the AAU team together, you know, their connection their ability to get out and find one another, that's a big deal. You know, that seems to have obviously carried over and turned, to, you know, turned into, you know, a short turnaround into this program that's really on the rise and playing so well right now. Uh, but, you know, we have a game plan in, in place, you know, to, to defend what their strength is in their transition. And it's not going to be easy because they get out and they're just talented players with a great coach that has found a great way to get out and score an average 80 points. We certainly have our hands full, you know, with them wanting to get out and play up and down. But with that being said, we like to go up and down ourselves. So I, I think I like that pace. I think it's going to be an exciting basketball game for 40 plus minutes, however long it's going to take. I think it's going to be good, a really good women's basketball game in the tournament, which is what you want to see. These are the elite teams in 64, but they really want to get out and run. So I think we have our challenges, but I also think we do have a plan that's you know, in place to hopefully try to slow that, that transition game down. Questions? Please raise your hand if you have any questions. Coach, I, I think you sort of touched on this earlier, but uh, just how much of an advantage is, does your experience, you know, the players who've been in the tournament before and just the veteran player, the veteran leadership have, will help you tomorrow? Yeah, I think, again, reflecting back to the, you know, the first time and the second time, you know, you get this, you know, excitement and happy to be here, and then as the years go on and your, your goals and aspirations change for your program and within the players, and now, you know, it's a, it's a real opportunity for us. And it was talked about not only as the coaches, but when you don't have to talk about it, coaches to your team and players, when it's an expectation amongst your players and your team is talking about what they want makes our job a lot easier. So this is, this is an expectation from them. They've worked extremely hard to get here. This is the moment they want. I expect them to make the most of their moment. When you went one and three in that stretch, was there, what changed? I mean, do, you know, there's all sorts of reasons. Ball just doesn't, ball just bounces around way, whatever. Was there meetings? Did you change things? What was the catalyst to go from that to this? Well, we certainly, we, there's a lot that goes into it. Um, there's not just one thing. There was certainly an injury to Brittany Johnson. Um, we were playing five in and five out. Uh, we adjusted to that. Uh, you know, there was a, just a, a flip of the ca calendar to February. And there were some other symbolic um, things that we did as a team from within that I, th I believe made an impact on going back to the purpose of what we were doing, why we were doing it. I mean, maybe that's a player, the question that the players want to ask or answer more than myself, so. Yeah, I think we just kind of banded together. I think, um, obviously, we didn't like to lose, um, and it was happening a little bit more frequently than we were used to in past years. So I think, you know, we just banded together. Um, we made some changes on the court, off the court, and, um, you know, just got back to Quinnipiac basketball, sharing the ball um, and winning. So That was Carly. 
Any other questions? Well, thank you to Quinnipiac. Um, the locker room is open for about another 17 minutes or so, and then they will uh, have the court. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Practice.